Morning, this is Brian. Today is February 14th, 2021. It's a beautiful Valentine's Day. And I'm on a fire break near Blue Jay Campground. What I want to do in this video is kind of do a follow-up spotlight video. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be spotlighting a shrub that I've done before the birch leaf circocarpus or birch leaf mountain mahogany circocarpus betuloides ready betuloides and you want to refer for the general information about this plant to my December 29th 2019 video which is the full full on spotlight on birch leaf circocarpus or birch leaf mountain mahogany well what I want to do right now is kind of a follow up so if you're looking for the general information like distribution, uh, t you know, growth, general growth habits. Refer back to that video. But what I want to do here is kind of spotlight an, a s single aspect of their habit, and that's their leaf retention. So if you ever r uh, read field guides about our chaparral plants here in Southern California, you will definitely come across birch leaf mountain mahogany or birch leaf circuit carpus. I typically call it birch leaf circuit carpus, but it's also called mountain mahogany. And it's not related to the true mahoganies in the Meliaceae, the mahogany and china berry family. So we got birch leaf circuit carpus, circuit carpus betuloides, variety betuloides. Now, if you're reading about birch leaf mountain mahogany, you might read a few different things about its leaf habits. What I mean is leaf retention. Is it evergreen? Deciduous? What is it? Well, to be honest with you, it's a lot more complicated than just being evergreen or deciduous. Because a lot of guides will tell you that it's evergreen. Some will even some might even mention that it's drought deciduous. And both of those may be true some of the time, or even most of the time. So we're looking here at this birch leaf circuit carpus, and we see that it's fully evergreen. This one has all of its leaves. It hasn't really shed any. This one here is primarily evergreen, right here. This one's retained probably at least 90 percent of its foliage, maybe 80 percent. This one here is partially deciduous. This one is shed probably about maybe a third, maybe a third of its foliage. So you can see there are some pretty sparse areas and thinking, okay, those sparse areas are probably maybe dead twigs. Well, some of them might be dead twigs indeed. However, I was examining a few of these and I noticed these twigs here, like this leafless twig right here, actually has live tissue. I can see a green bud at the end of the twig. So this one is ex experiencing a partial deciduousness. Deciduous meaning falling off. So this one might be, this one I would say is semi-evergreen or even semi-deciduous. Semi-evergreen and semi-deciduous seem like they would be synonymous terms, but I try to read quote-unquote between the lines and semi-evergreen I, I take as retaining significantly more of its leaves than if it were semi-deciduous which would mean to me losing a significant amount more of its foliage than semi-evergreen. So this one kind of walks the line between semi-evergreen and semi-deciduous. I would call this semi-evergreen because some foliage drop has occurred and a lot of foliage retention has remained. And this birch leaf circuit carpus, you know, this is very, very, very common in this little spot. This one right here is again semi evergreen. It's retained a significant amount of its foliage. And this one, this one, let's see here. The, the, the tissue on those twigs is dead. This one seems to be primarily evergreen. So I don't see a lot of uh, foliage loss. The 
tissue, well, the tissue on this twig appears to be dead on the top tip of the twig. This one right here is just about fully evergreen. Now, let's head over to a really nice, nice dense thicket of it over here that appears to be semi-deciduous. Again, this one tends to be mostly evergreen. And this one here tends to be mostly deciduous. And I've been looking at this shrub for a few minutes before I started recording this, trying to see the, the, the health of the twigs. Well, this branch here is primarily dead. So that's not a factor in what I want to talk about. This branch here is alive. It looks like it's dying, but it's not. In fact, new leaves are starting to come out on this twig here. So this Circocarpus, this individual, tends to be semi-deciduous. It's about, probably about uh, anywhere from 65 to 70 percent leafless. Probably closer to 60, 65 I should say maybe, really think about it. Still retains a fair amount of its crown of foliage through these winter months. Now sometimes circuit carpets can be quite sparsely foliated, doesn't always have a very dense crown of foliage, but you can clearly tell here that there was a period of leaf drop. Might it have been during the summer, the summer dry season, or may it have been during the fall. That I can't really honestly tell you because I wasn't here in the fall to see what was going on. So they might have a tendency for some slight drought deciduousness, maybe even some slight winter deciduousness. It appears that these twigs here are pr primarily l consisting of living tissue. I can see green buds and new small little leaves starting to pop out. These buds here are swelling. So if this were a, a drought deciduous shrub, it's responding to the rains we had at the end of January. We also had some rain at the end of December as well. It's been a very, very near record dry winter here in Orange County. Uh, other spots might have had a little bit more rain, but where I live in North Orange County, it's been ridiculously dry. 2020, 2021. So, I just wanted to kind of follow up that video I did about Spotlight. I know I mentioned about uh, the deciduousness of Circocarpus in that video. I wanted to expound on it a little bit more here because I found a perfect example of multiple shrubs with multiple habits. This one, primarily evergreen, but it did have a deciduous twig. So again, even within the same plant, different parts of the same plant might uh, demonstrate different habits of leaf retention. So here we go. Here's where the trunk. Here's where the trunks meet and form the root burrow. You can kind of see the woody mass there, the root burrow. So these are very tough, very tough shrubs. So one of the ways is when conditions get extremely tough is for them to potentially shed some foliage. Probably, my guess is that this one probably shed some of its foliage during the late summer and early fall months because of the dry season and then is basically staying partially deciduous until now as we're heading towards the spring it's mid-february right now but with the weather patterns we've been having it's been alternating between slightly cooler than average to warmer than average in fact we're heading for much warmer than average conditions and drier conditions apparently for the rest of the entire month if only, I don't know how much rainfall we've had here because we are higher up and the clouds brush up against the mountains and are pulled up and that causes them to rain more. It's called orographic lift. So this area probably gets significantly more rainfall than where I live in flat North Orange County. So again, virtually circuit carpus. Very, very interesting habits. and. Well, most, not all, most of our chaparral shrubs are relatively evergreen. In other words, they keep their leaves all year round, or they have foliage on them year round. 
that degree is not always so clear cut when it comes to different species of shrubs. I've also known some deciduousness in scrub oaks. So I am going to move on to talk about scrub oaks for a few minutes here. The scrub oaks in this area tend to be fully evergreen. I haven't seen really any deciduousness except for maybe some slight leaf loss, but pretty much all the scrub oaks in this area, which are either Quercus acutidens or Quercus berberifolia, and I really have a hard time telling those two apart. Uh, I need to reach out to a hardcore botanist to finally get the key to unlocking them, to what is the mystery to me about it. But these scrub oaks here tend to be primarily evergreen. However, I've seen scrub oaks de uh, demonstrate some semi-evergreen habits and even some semi-deciduous habits in parts of here, in here in the Santa Ana Mountains actually. I've seen some in Upper Trabuco Canyon that were partially deciduous. I was hiking there in November 2014, the end of November, and there were some scrub oaks that were half deciduous, and they appear to be half winter deciduous because they had ye some yellow fall leaves on them. And I've also seen a couple of other ones, I believe, uh, I remember correctly, back was it, was it March of 2017? Yeah, March of 2017, I hiked along uh, the Bear Canyon Trail to sit and peak, and a uh, nice chunk of the way there from uh, the trailhead. I don't think, yeah, maybe about quarter, or maybe about halfway. Just an estimate. I remember seeing uh, some scrub oaks there. There are a couple scrub oaks in one section of the trail that appeared to lose half to maybe even slightly more than half of their leaves. So this scrub oak here is exactly what I'm talking about. Again, this is live tissue. These are not dead twigs here. These buds are alive. I can tell by the texture that these are living buds. This one right here, also demonstrating a little bit of probably winter deciduousness. And you can see here, you see a lot of these uh, slightly older leaves have also kind of miscolored, become discolored and will fall off pretty soon. So, evergreen and deciduous. The motto of this story, even though I primarily focus on birch leaf circuit carpus, and then of course change direction and start talking about uh, scrub oak, is that being evergreen and deciduous is not always a clear-cut case. It can be very dependent on local conditions, and even just the individual plants themselves. See again, this scrub oak is primarily evergreen. That scrub oak there, semi-evergreen. This scrub oak, semi-evergreen. Again, this is living tissue. That's a living twig right there. So sometimes they do get a, a sparse canopy in the summer. I mean in the winter. Sometimes uh, some of these scrub oaks will lose some of their leaves. Some of them will, might lose them during some of their leaves during drought to conserve energy. But one thing is for sure, these, tree, these small trees right here, Fraxinus dipetala, tend to be late summer, early fall deciduous. In other words, they shed their leaves in the summer late summer and fall months, but then they uh, stay deciduous all the way until March usually. Then they start leafing out usually in March. So that is, uh, that is what we call fully deciduous. These little trees back here, all leafless. This one here, all leafless. So that one, yeah, you can tell. Some foothill ash, chap uh, chaparral ash, also called California ash. So. Although I, uh, I started talking about this being a follow-up to Birchleaf Circuit Carpus Spotlight, and it was the first half of the video, I figured I'd talk about some of these plants that might actually be not quite as evergreen as you think. Now, ones that tend to be fully evergreen and typically retain those characteristics would be chemise, adenostoma fasciculatum variety fasciculatum, 
Toyon, Heteromelia's arbutifolia. I don't typically see any real deciduous habits unless the plant is dying. That's, you know, that's a, that's a whole different story. One shrub that is reliably evergreen, Eastwood manzanita, Arctostaphylus glandulosa glandulosa. So there are plants here that do generally stick to the fully evergreen habit. And then we got Ceanothus oleganthus, I believe. I have trouble telling oleganthus and Ceanothus tomentosus, but that, I believe, is Ceanothus oleganthus. I'm sticking with that, and that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but, yeah. Ceanothus, most of our Ceanothus tend to stay evergreen, except for semi-evergreen to semi-deciduous Ceanothus palmary, palmer Ceanothus, and Ceanothus Antigermis variety macrothursus, the deer brush, southern deer brush, which ranges from semi deciduous to fully deciduous. So, again, there we are. This scrub oak has a very luxuriant canopy. So, you can say this one's fully evergreen. Fully evergreen. And, uh, and the tr most of the trees here tend to be fully evergreen. Uh, well, most in quantity. We do have deciduous tree species here, too. But most of the tree species, like Coast Live Oak, Quercus agrifolia, Variety agrifolia, tend to be fully evergreen. My next video to go talk about a species I did another spotlight on called the Oracle Oak, Quercus marejas. And you follow this way, down a little ways, you'll find that plant. But uh, that's another one that has uh, an interesting habit of being evergreen or deciduous, semi-evergreen or semi-deciduous. Gamut between nearly all of those habits. evergreen habit here in the Santa Ana Mountains. Before I go, I'm going to show this beautiful patch of scrub oak right here. Very large leaf scrub oaks. This one here, I am willing to almost bet money that this is Quercus acutidens. Tory scrub oak is the, is the name of it. Quercus, and you get the little X in acutidens because it's a hybrid. But this is a very large, very large and very intricate scrub oak, and the leaf undersides tend to be seem a little bit hairier than the other scrub oak. I'm almost willing to bet this is Quercus acutidens right here. Very large leaves for for a scrub oak. So I'll leave that on here, and I'll see you over by the Oracle Oak momentarily in my next video. Thanks for watching.